Secure the bag, y'all. That's the brand, and we get. To- yo, yo, what's going on, family? It's your man Tay Sweat here once again with another STB Market Watch. Um, I'm super happy for everybody who's been doing what they say they wanted to do. Um, it's been a great week so far, and we're looking for another, probably, maybe one of the best moves of the month uh, next week. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because um, we got some stuff I'm seeing on the charts, and then we got a really big week coming up with the um, BRICS. So you have the BRICS meeting. Um, there's going to be, I think it's like three to five days of this meeting. So it's going to be a big day or big week next week. And I'm expecting it to bring big moves, right? Big moves. And I think we should, honestly, we're going to look at the charts, but I think we should actually fall. We're going to potentially fall in the market. Um, we, we're hitting all our targets. So I think we're going to fall probably to 4,200 on the ES or 42 and some change on the ES. And we'll, we'll go into it. So let, let me share my screen over to the charts really quick. We're going to get started on this recap so we can go into a great weekend. All right, so let's do it. All right. So this is my, um, this is a weekly chart. I'm kind of looking at some macro um, weekly chart, big sellers. Uh, we've been we've been talking about these sellers, um, and I'll also go to the XPX uh, here in a few uh, to make it make more sense. But I've been telling everyone that we have this target right here in range, uh, as low as forty two, and on the spy because I know we trade the spy because it's a little cheaper for my people who are uh, you know have smaller accounts. Um, on the spy, that's going to be right around that uh, four. 423 ish range right so i've been i've been saying listen i think we need to get to 423 i think we need to get to 423 that's where i see us going and i think we're going to do that before mid-september right um so that being said i'm actually going to be expecting it's probably going to be a little bounce i'm not gonna lie just a little bitty bounce uh maybe to come back up here and pick up either these sellers or these sellers um let's see if we close this week which i think we will if we close this week below here then all of these turn into sellers. so that's what i'm going to be looking for but um definitely seeing a bounce here on a macro so this is macro so if you're day trading or you know multi-day swing trading this is not this is not something you want to uh like look at or enter on a weekly chart right but you need to know where this thing is going so right now you need to know that yeah we're bearish right um, the best time, if anybody's a, a really good trader, you know this, or if you've been trading at least for, I don't know, six months plus, you should know this. Um, one of the best things you want to do is when you're looking to get into puts, you buy them when the market's moving up. We were in puts, right? When the market was moving up, um, we started getting in right around in this candle. Um, we've made money as it bounced around, Right. We made money this week. Let's go into the SPX really quick. And we're going to go to a lower time frame. And let's see, 15 minutes should work. All right. So uh, weekly re- recap. Um, doing my best to do more. Because see, I like, I like swing trades, right? And I'm doing my best to maybe get two or three swing trades in a week for my people inside the Discord. And the reason why I say that is because um, a lot of y'all can't keep up with day trading, right? Shit, I can't keep up with day trading. I don't have the time. I got other stuff I got to do. And you must watch the buyers and sellers because they can change at any time, right? And if you're not watching those damn buyers and sellers, yeah, you you can get clapped out. Let me just say that. You can get clapped out really quick um, if you are looking to day trade, right? So what I like to do for a lot of you all is give it time, give it time, give it time, right? So anyway... Let's get into um, this week's recap. Let's see, five minute, five minute, five minute, boom. All right. So we had a crazy pop-up that a lot of people thought, oh man, we were were on our way out of here, right? So um, if we go over uh, the Discord, um, I gave, this is not the spot, so I gave the alert on the spot because SPX is a little too expensive, but my spa has way too many lines on it. So like I said, I'm going to keep this, keep this clean for y'all. So um, 
I saw this action here getting choppy. So we gave we gave the alert um, right around. It was like a 40. It was right at like 4450 or excuse me, 444.50. So $444 is right around that strike price we got in, right? Um, Cause I was seeing this price, uh, this action, price action here. I knew we had sellers in here, which is another reason why, and actually they go as high as here, right? So sellers, so you got these two big bearish engulfing candles, sellers, sellers. And then of course um, you get back over here, you got sellers. So as we were stepping into this box, um, I wanted to go short, right? Um, so we went ahead and got the puts and then I gave the alert to get down to 442 on the spot, right? Um, I'm sure somebody's gonna think I'm capping. So hold on, let me, let me bring up, <laughs> you know, I like to bring up receipts, right? So let me bring up the alert, we'll go over, all right? We bring up the alert and we'll go over it. So um, as you see here uh, on the 14th, so uh, August 14th, 2023, um, I basically came out and said, look, while we wait on our call entry, because I, I had a target that I wanted to like hit, right? So I said, look, while we wait on our call ent entry, let's make some money on the way down, <laughs> right? Why not? We know where we got to go. So I'm like, look, while we wait, buy puts at 446, 447, right? That's what I was waiting on. Me personally, I like the front run. So sometimes I might not even wait for 446, right? Um, strike price 445, uh, target 30% to 40 uh, to 140%, or we can start taking profit around that 443, right? Right around the 443. Um, as you see before then, I gave calls. I said, look, we're going to get into calls uh, and I like to scale in. So 442 was where I was ex actually expecting it to go to. Um, but I said, get out at 443 because I like to front run. That's something I, I do. A lot of times I like to front run, front run, front run, front run, right? So I said, hey, let's front run this thing. Um, we took our puts down to 443. So that was like a $4 like fall, right? Three to $4 because I don't think we made it totally to 447. But we'll go back to the charts and check it out. I just wanted to come in and just kind of show this. I know some people, you know, this is this is free content. So when you put out free content, you're always going to get one of those negative Nancy's to come in and say, you're full of shit. You didn't call that. Da, 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 da. So I got to just do because, you know, some people get swayed by these people, uh, these negative Nancy's. So <laughs> so let's get back to it. So um, the alert was given right, right around to get in at like that 446 area. OK, so let's go back to the charts. And let's see what we got. All right. So here we are. We're back. Like I said, um, we, this was the sales zone, right? It's the sales zone. Um, a lot of us, of course, we got in. I, I probably got in around here, right? Somewhere in here. So I had to go through a little pain as we were moving up because, like I said, I front run, right? And I teach a lot of my students to front run. Um, and the reason why I do that, like I said, is people step in early. I've noticed buyers step in. So this is a sales zone. Sometimes sellers will step in like right in here, right? Um, I didn't get in here. It was more so like the middle because I wanted to wait until we got up to this peak. Um, that's what I was literally waiting on. So and as you see, let's draw a little line. This peak is a lot of sellers. So look, seller, seller, seller. So this was my entry and I probably hit it the first one. So I went through a little pain as we were going out of there. But the next, the very next day, uh, we made our move, right? And a lot of people made profit um, as we made our move down back to that four, like 443-ish range, right? So we got here. Some people continued to hold to 442 because they, they knew I was saying enter at 442. So that's what we got. Um, so yeah, it was a really good move down. Um, now we're still falling and I have a target. So I have three targets, potential target targets we should be hitting. 443 was the first one, 438, and this is on the spot, 443, first one, or really it was 442, 442, 438, I got 430, and then 423, right, and there's reasons for all of that, uh, let's see, let me get into 15 minutes, should be able to show me, right, so there's reasons for all of that, so here's a nice little gappy gap here, right, that's 443, three right that was one reason um y'all know I, i'm a gap trader i like my gaps 
right? I love, love my gaps, actually. Um, let's see. There's a little baby in here that I think we might we might try to get in here and hold support on. I don't know if we come down there yet, but I know we're trying to get there. Um, we got to get through this low. So there's another gap in here, right? These are little baby gaps, to be honest with you. They're baby gaps. So I don't know. I don't know if it's going to blow through this low because you got to beat that low out to get to this one. Then you got to beat that low out to get to this one, right? But if we can do that, once again, that'll put me right at that 42. I, I, like I said, and let me go to the spa, or let me say this on the spa. So I say 4,200, but like on the spa, that will be 423-ish, right? So that's why I say we got to get down here. We got to get down here. I don't know if it's going to happen all in one, one swoop. Uh, because as you see, we are leaking, 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 leaking. This looks like, but this, honestly, if we go to a larger time frame, this actually looked like a wave four to me. So that's why I'm like, I don't know how far we're going to fall. So let's go to the daily chart real quick and look at that wave four, right? Um, so I showed you those gaps, which are, you know, potential price targets for us, because that's usually how the market likes to move. It likes to give you, um, it likes to test its gaps, right? Um, I also see that a potential head and shoulders pattern is being uh, played out here. So this looks like a shoulder. This looks like the head. I think we're going to bounce back to the middle of this price action, uh, maybe up to the sellers to give us the other shoulder. Then we'll make our move down. So we'll see how that plays out. But that's, that's what I'm looking for, uh, potentially. And if we get into our waves, our wave patterns, um, I'm going to be looking for this to play out right so like i said on the longer term or excuse me on the larger time frame on a daily chart i'm looking at wave one wave two like i said that's one of three two of three three of three and like i mentioned i think this is a wave four okay so i do think this is a wave four but that but keep in mind please keep in mind this is a wave four of three <laughs> Okay, this is a wave four of three. So one, two, all of this is three. Okay, because like I said, one of three, two of three, three of three, four of three, which means we're gonna find some support either at this low, right? So let me let me price it in there. Boom. So we're gonna find support at this low. This low is forty three thirty. So either we're going to hit 43.30 and bounce or we're going to beat it out and try to get back down to this low, right? Or not that low. It ain't going to go that damn low. Uh, excuse me, this low. Because it ain't going that low yet. And the reason now, why can't I be, I can't say so sure, but rules are made to be followed, right? And the rules of just this wave pattern says that we cannot okay if this is wave one of three we cannot come into this price action right that's why i say i don't think we can get this low because if this is a wave four wave four cannot touch wave one that is the rule right i know a lot of people don't know elliott wave and they'll tell me that all oh, these are indicators and they're lagging and that 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 no they're not lagging <laughs> we know that there's a rule in place here we know that we cannot come, if this is the true wave pattern and it's going to be followed, because sometimes it breaks, right? It's part, it's probability. This is a game of probability. Nothing is 100%. But we know that if the rule says that you cannot come back to wave, uh, wave four, cannot come back to wave one, then guess what? We're not touching that. So once again, I have a price target to come to about that 4230-ish range, which supports this gap. Right. So that's why I think we can go. I don't know. And that's only if we can break past this low. If you can't break, break past this low, then guess what? It'll bounce. But if you can break past this low, then the next support is going to be this gap. OK, which we have some buyers in there. Buyer, 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 buyer. So, yeah, I expect to get bought up either here or here. All right. So that's what I'm going to be expecting. And then because this is a wave, um, <clears throat> this wave pattern looks to be wave four here and then wave five, right? 
So yeah, we're gonna go to new highs for this year um, as we go into wave five and as we go into October, like period, right? So once again, for me, I like this. Um, I like this wave structure. I do think this is where we're going. This is where we are. Um, wave four is definitely underway. I called it, I mean, we've been calling it, right? Just go back and look. We've been calling, I said, I think we need to come back for a wave four. Um, and then of course, uh, once we get back up through wave five, then we'll look for that corrective pattern, um, which would be A, B, C down, right? And that C down, um, one of my price targets, my C down, if we're going to get a C down anytime soon, my C down is like 3,700, 3,750 is where I think we're going. Um, that's just what my predictive indicators are showing me. Um, yeah, ha. I see a C wave down. If we can finish this out, so A, excuse me, wave four, wave five, A, B, C. So, um, and this is once again larger time frame. <laughs> I'm sure somebody gonna be like, "Hey, you you mentioned A, B, C on the 15 minute chart." Yes. So, 15 minute chart is a fractal of this wave four. So, wave four being something that moves in an A, B, C pattern down. Right? I know I'm, I'm, I'm going a little far and I'm getting a little deep for some people, but just follow me, please uh, work with me. So this is a wave, looks like an A wave up, look like we got a slight B wave. This is a C wave down. Now, what does that mean? Corrective waves, which uh, wave four is corrective, corrective waves. Let me change this color. Corrective waves move in an ABC, right? So this looks like A, B, C down, right? So what we're going to be expecting is inside of this ABC, there are fractals, all right? So what this means is on the 15 or 30 minute chart, this A wave down moves in five waves. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, right? Like that's how it will move. It will move in five waves down. So that one, two, and I, I want to show you because this probably can go into a, let's see. Hopefully this stays up. Let me make sure this is on the lower time frame. Okay, so lower time frame. I just wanna, I, you know, it's hard to teach Elliott Wave, you know, in one swoop to people who don't really know it yet. Uh, but I'm gonna try to show you a little something, right? So this A wave down, so A, B, C, this A wave should move because we're moving downward on a lower time frame. The fractal should give us a one, two, right? And two, wave two cannot come as high as wave one. So one, two, wave three down, four, five, right? And actually I did that. Let me, let me, so I can keep up with it. So wave one, two, we should stop three right here. Wave three down, I'm going to change the color of this one, four, five. And then that gets you into an A, B, C against that. Then what we do is we go right back into a Wave one, two, three. <laughs> we should get a baby pop here, four, and then five down to finish us out to here, right? To finish us out here. That's what I see coming. Now I'm gonna change this one to a white line. Now this is fractals. This is literally fractals. I'm teaching you fractals right now. Fractals and showing you how the wave patterns move in real time or not real time, but in, I mean, this is real time, meaning this is the move. This is literally how it's supposed to play out based on the fractals of each one. So this yellow line was the day chart, right? The daily chart of a wave four. But the wave four has an ABC wave playing out, which should be on maybe like the four hour chart, right? Then the hour chart is showing you five wave structures of each of the ABC waves that's playing out. And guess what? It goes even deeper because this five wave structure has five waves in it on like the 15 minute chart. <laughs> All right. So I'm just showing you that, yes, this is how this thing works. Okay. It's called fractals. And if we go into a larger time frame, the daily chart is giving you a fractal wave pattern of a larger, you know, weekly or monthly pattern. So this is how it plays out. I know this is complex for a lot of my beginners, but please, please, please just, I, I, I get it. Just walk with me, all right? Walk with me a little bit here. <laughs> so 
that's why I say I think this is our support level because I mean literally our wave structure is playing right into that. Wave four should we should get a bounce. Wave four bounce. We should get a move down some more to about that on the on the spot that should be right around like four thirty. Yeah, so right around four thirty ish, we should hit four thirty and bounce. Okay, four thirty and bounce. So I'm gonna be looking for a bounce out of there. Um, the bounce. If if this truly is our wave three, or excuse me, our wave four, this yellow line, wave four that's going to bounce off this area, then guess what? I'm going to be expecting wave five. So remember, this yellow line was wave five, right? I'm going to be expecting wave five to give us those same wave patterns out of there. So if wave five actually starts here off the, our support, I'm going to expect a wave one. It's going to pull back, but it cannot come back to here. That's going to let you know that this is starting to wave one and then two. Wave three is going to gap up, right? We'll gap wave three, wave four to come back and support this area. Wave four, boom, and then we'll get a wave five somewhere in here, right? We'll get that wave five. This is what, and this will be one of five, two of five, three of five, four of five, five of five, because this yellow line is wave five. So you got a five wave structure inside of wave five. I'm giving sauce. I'm giving the game. This is something that I'm telling you, if you can learn this stuff, you can pretty much predict where the market is going just based on the previous wave, right? And then we get into mono waves and things like that, but I'm not even going to go there, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway, this is how you can help you to like plot data to understand um, where the next move is going, because guess what? Waves like to move in 1.0s, right? So a lot of times, you know, wave one, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> wave three will be, you know, a, a larger portion of wave one, right? So that's usually what we can get out of wave three. And then wave five is gonna be a, a portion of wave three. Like that's how this game works. So this Fibonacci thing is just a measuring tool. That's it, just measuring your, um, what we call mono waves, that, that is literally it, right? And then you can even do it with time. However long this wave took, a lot of times, uh, it's going to, at the bottom of wave two, if this took one week to play out, if you can find the bottom of wave two, wave three is going to take roughly that amount of time to play out. And because wave threes are always bigger, that's the rule, because wave threes are always bigger, guess what? If it's going to play the same time frame, guess what? It needs to gap. So you're going to see that most, most of the time, wave threes, you're going to see gap ups. That's just how it works. Okay. But hey, man, this is just my little game. This is, a, this is, how, I, this is how I move, man. Um, this is where we close. Let me erase this. No, I don't want to erase it. Hold on. Because I want to keep this support line here. Because I told you we need to go to 4330. And as you see, the ES is down pre-market. So, um, it's not giving us our pre-market line right now for the, uh, the SPX. But pre-market, we should actually get down here because the, the ES is down. So we should get here and hit that perfectly, right? Now, are we going to bounce today? Probably. <laughs> Probably. And, I mean, are we going to like start our wave five today? I don't know. I don't know about that one, right? But we, we can see. We're going to see. Um, but this is definitely my support area. Support area number one, support area number two, which is about that 4,200. We cannot pass 4,200 right now based on the wave structure. So that, that's my overview for the day, all right? Right now, we cannot pass this line based on the wave structure, okay? So I hope this helps. I hope this was very helpful. Um, this is our recap. Shout out to everybody who got, uh, you know, made some big money this week, you know, good money this week on our puts. Um, and of course, we're going to be looking to enter uh, for our call. So, you know, I just want to make this and really I, I only do this to help my people who are in the, the uh, discord. So um, hopefully you can come in and study this stuff and just kind of look back and find some wave patterns um, and, you know, maybe play them against what I'm doing. Uh, history tells you everything, right? So if you go back through history, you can see wave patterns playing out, right? So look at this, look at this wave pattern, right? I'm going to show you how to back test. This history is showing us that this was this was wave one of three, right? On the daily chart. So look, wave one should have a five wave structure. So here's your one, wave two. Look at this. This was wave three of 
So keep in mind, this is wave three of, and this way it gets kind of hard. Wave three of wave one of wave three. <laughs> okay, look, <clears throat> don't don't mind me. All right, it get crazy. So wave one, wave two, wave three. Um, this gave us a wave four, and actually, I'm gonna say this was wave three. That was your wave four, and then we got a wave five out of there. And guess what? We needed an ABC down. How do we get that ABC down? We went A. B, and you can actually even stretch that wave A a little lower because um, I like that. I like that one a lot. So wave A, B, wave C down. And guess what? We started to make our way out of there. Wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, right? So this is, this is how it works. And you can literally just play the, the fractals on this game all day, right? This is how this game works. You can literally play practice. So once again, it's not easy to learn, but once you get it, it it's, it's something that, I mean, you can't unsee it. I'll just say that. You can't unsee this stuff. Once you get it fully, you cannot unsee it, right? Two, three, four, five, right? You, you can't unsee this stuff. So, you know, that's, that's how this thing works you know, counter A, B, C down, and then you started your next wave. So yeah, this is how the market moves. It moves in fractals, okay? And when you learn these fractals, I mean, shit just gets a lot easier, okay? So once again, this is my time for the day. I love you all. Um, <clears throat> definitely looking forward to seeing a lot of you in this Sunday's uh, webinar. We're going to be teaching. It's kind of going to be an encore of last week. Uh, I'm going to actually just teach the same thing until people like lock it in. So y'all can come back to this week, uh, this webinar where I talked about the moon cycles and I talked about a lot of the stuff that people have been wondering how I do, um, how we can forecast the markets. You can come back and just keep watching it. Just keep watching it until you get it, until it locks in, right? So once again, have a great weekend. I'll see you Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll put some information below so if anybody wants to sign up for it, you can. Outside of that, love you. See you next week. I'm out. Secure the bag, yeah, that's the brand, and we get to the bag.